Hey everyone, um, it's been a little while. Um, I haven't uploaded a video um, for a couple months and there's been a couple reasons for that. Um, some of the easier reasons are because, you know, I, I start a new job and I've been busy. Um, I've actually bought a house, which, is, which has been kind of crazy. So there's, there's a lot of reasons, but the main reason why I stopped probably like five, six months ago was because I was going through something, I would describe it as an episode of depression. And I want to kind of talk to that and share my experience with that with all of you. <clears throat> and the reason why I want to share this is not because um, I don't expect pity or anything like that from anyone. Um, the biggest reason is because it was such a significant um, experience in my life. This experience has taught me a little bit more about mental illness and a little bit about those people that experience it and go through it. And and um, I felt, I feel like it's super important to share these things um, and make it less stigmatized to talk about um, because I think it's much more prevalent, especially with everything going on in our lives. So, uh, a couple of months ago, um, honestly, a lot of things were not going well in my life. And I'm not going to get into details, but I'll, I'll share uh, a general idea of the, uh, where my life was and my state of, uh, you know, state of life was. <clears throat> the first thing was I was in a job that... I was not happy with. Every day I would wake up, I was not looking forward to going to work. And I, even though I love, uh, I enjoyed working with the people, I did not enjoy doing what I was doing. I was just miserable, honestly. And um, every day was just a, such a, uh, such an obstacle on, on just going to work and you know getting in and leaving and i i feared like going on mondays in on mondays because i just didn't i did not i did not look forward at all at going into work i just didn't feel fulfilled in any way the second another big reason um and i know um this sounds like a more of a first world problem but i was actually uh buying a home during the same time and you know i'm a single guy and um, it, these are very adult um, situations, adult decisions to be made. And, you know, I, I had to um, work with a realtor, with a loan officer, with, um, you know, um, a title company and figure out the whole buying process of buying a home, you know, um, doing all the money, financial stuff and, you uh, you know, then there's moving and there's um, renovations and fixing and all these things. And it's a lot for one person if, you know, so that was also very, like, stressful. Uh, even though I was excited, it was extremely stressful and would keep me up all night uh, many, uh, many times. And then the last other area that I have, I was experiencing a lot of difficulties was just kind of, in my dating life, um, I had a string of breakups and just, um, and also just a string of really honestly pretty crappy dates. And I just didn't feel good about myself. I have very little self worth um, and self esteem. Um, <coughs> <coughs> so all these things um, started to snowball um onto each other and i didn't notice for a while for probably a, i think a month i didn't notice that things were getting very um difficult for me um and from my understanding you know um like depression can manifest itself in different ways in different people um, and I'm just going to give you kind of my experience on kind of what happened. Firstly, I, for me, I stopped eating. Like, I stopped eating most meals. 
I rarely ate breakfast, um, rarely ate lunch, and I would eat something in, for dinner just so I can basically just survive and my body could have some type of <laughs> nutrients. But that was like for like a couple of months. Like I, and, and I started to realize I didn't have any like appetite at all either. The only thing I want to eat, well, I couldn't keep down anything on it. Uh, nothing tasted good. The only thing that tasted good were like really strong fatty or sugary uh, foods. So Taco Bell, McDonald's, Wendy's, In and Out, ice cream, cookies, candy. Um, those are the only things that had some appeal, and it wasn't even like a lot. It was just like enough appeal for me to go out, grab it, and like sustain my uh, my like sust sustenance, you know, for my body. Um, so that that was one big indicator. It's just I stopped eating, like like a lot <laughs> another area in my life where this started affecting it was um just my hobbies and my interests i just had very uh, like zero interest in doing anything honestly um because i would m like <clears throat> i had very little energy for anything um just getting out of bed took a a monumental amount of energy just getting out of bed and getting dressed that literally would take me an hour or two so I, but the thing is i was up all night i was my my sleep was affected uh, to an extreme amount and i i i was barely sleeping like at all um so i would be up most of the night and then um, having to plan for work and getting <laughs> dressed. And then, like I said, forget eating anything. I, did, I, did, I didn't have any desire nor energy <laughs> to uh, make breakfast or eat breakfast. Um, I All my focus and all my energy was to get out of my bed and to get dressed and try to put somewhat of a face so people didn't see I was like extremely depressed like all day like that that took all my energy so I stopped going I stopped working out stopped going to the gym I stopped watching movies stopped playing games stopped um um just all all of my hobbies anything that like brought me joy before um I just completely stopped doing. Um, I just didn't have any energy nor desire to do it. And then um, going on that, um, one of the biggest things also that I noticed, uh, there was two more big uh, indicators, was any anyone that knows me uh, knows that I love music. And I listen to music. And I, I'm always singing out loud. I know it's a very annoying, but I love to sing out loud. Um and that i stopped doing that too um and that's never happened to me in my life like i've always depended on music to help me even if i'm sad or you know like I w music would be able to help me uh, process feelings and emotions um but i had zero desire i didn't feel i would put in music in my car or in my room and i felt nothing like it was very strange a very strange experience to listen to you know some of my favorite music and artists and feel absolutely nothing no emotions not good or bad just no emotions at all um and then the last part that really was probably the the thing that triggered me that i knew something was definitely wrong was my self-worth i I I had very little to no self-worth um, in my mind for myself. Um, there were times like I started thinking about the future and that would bring like pain. It would bring like depression thinking about the future. Like 
I rather not think about the future. Yeah, um, I had very little hope for the future in 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 almost every aspect. And I remember I was texting a friend. And I was, you know, and I'm experiencing all these things. And I was texting her. And my and I started texting her just that I was, like, a horrible person. That I didn't um, deserve anything. And just I was just writing these horrible things about myself. Um, and I realized, like, writing those things down... That something was extremely wrong. This is not who I am, and this is not how my mind normally functions. I'm not normally uh, thinking these things about myself. And so that was like probably the straw that uh, showed me that something was very wrong. I was crying, uh, regularly crying at work. You know, I would not in front of people, but I would go to an area, a uh, private area, and I would just be crying. I remember just praying, like getting, literally getting on my knees at work because uh, I didn't know if I was going to be able to finish, like, my shift, you know, because I felt so hopeless and so sad. It was, it, it was extremely difficult. Um, so I started, um, uh, going online and looking into what was happening or what was going on uh, with me. So I started looking up depression or episodes of depression, anything like that. And most of it correlated, I would say most of it correlated, you know, <clears throat> because I've been sad before and, you know, you could be sad for a couple of days, a week or two, whatever, but at this point, it's like a month or two, like going into two months at this point. I realized I had to do something quick um, because the longer I let this uh, go, the longer it was going to take me to get back to uh, normalcy. <laughs> um, so what I decided to do was I decided to speak with my boss. I told her what I felt was happening and that um, I was going to reach out and get help, which, mean, which meant for me, reach out to close friends and uh, a therapist. Um, so I started talking to friends and it, telling them kind of what was going on. And this was extremely helpful, like reaching out to close ones and uh, those um, close friends of mine um, they were all extremely sympathetic and empathetic about my situation and asked me you know like what they can do for me and um, they really answered the call they you know went out to see me they came out to help me you know, with house stuff, literally, I have friends that came to just make me dinner, um, because I, like, I, I had, I had such a hard time, even, like, like, eating, and just making anything for myself, and I had such good friends who came and helped me, and literally, they're just sitting with me and, like, making dinner with me. Like, that, for me, like, meant the world for me. Because I was, like I said, I was in a really bad, I was in a really bad, like, place. And I I felt hopeless, completely hopeless in so many ways. Um... And that's something, like, one thing I take away from, like, this whole experience is that I have extremely good friends. And, like, and um, it's so, like, it's so important to surround yourself with good people um, who care about you and, like, your well-being. 
And, um, and I, like I said, I also reached out to my therapist and I talked to her about kind of what was going on, uh, with me. And she agreed. She agreed that I had all the traits of like a depression, a depressive episode. And she told me like what I needed to do and what I needed to do was, um, uh, start going back and force myself into like good habits because, um, yeah, like uh, depression and mental illness, it just kind of sneaks up on you and it's, it's like a cycle. It, you really just spiral, you know, you stop eating and so you don't have energy and then, um, and then you start working out and so you don't feel like, um, you're not getting, you know, those health benefits either. Um, then you stop sleeping. So you're tired and then it just kind of spirals and your, uh, uh, um, your, and then your brain, um, just, um, you know, is in this like depressive state and isn't able, <clears throat> doesn't have the capability of like, of seeing the good in things in you or anymore. It like, it, for me, it really felt like my brain just shut down. Like my brain shut down because it experienced so much pain. My brain was like emotionally numb and did not want to experience any emotions, good or bad anymore. And uh, it left my body to its devices and said, you, you, you body, you go survive. So more time passed by. So we're probably like three months in, um, you know, three and a half, almost four months in. And I do see like things improving. I do see myself like getting, you know, being, enjoying things more. I forced myself to exercise, even if it was just a little bit. I forced myself to meal prep. I forced myself to um, um, go outside of my room. Um, and like I said, it took every ounce of will and energy that I had. <clears throat> um, and those that know me um, know that I... I'm a very extrovert person. Like, I love going out. I now understand much better about people who, you know, don't have the energy for, you know, meeting people and socializing. Like, it does take a lot of energy, um, especially when you're not um, emotionally and mentally um, <clears throat> in a good place. But yeah, it's been pretty much six months since then. Um, and I feel like I'm, I'm basically back to normal how I was before this experience. And, um, it's just, it's made me really, uh, reflect on that experience. And I realize I did want to kind of share about it, share it with everyone. And, um, hopefully, um, and if anybody watches this and they're feeling anything similar, I, you know, I invite you to reach out to those you care about and explain how you're feeling and how you're doing. And, um, and, uh, I am well, you're welcome to reach out to me and me speaking with a lot of people. I realize that it is more common. It's very common, um, that more common than we think. And there's a lot of people that live with this and I can't imagine living with like chronic depression. That would, that would be my worst nightmare. Um, but I think this experience uh, taught me on what I need to do to make sure like that this doesn't happen again. And the things I need to be doing for myself to make sure I have a balanced life so I can be mentally and like emotionally well. I hope this experience helped, you know, you or at the very least you were able to learn something from it. And I hope to continue making more videos a little bit more often. And, uh, and I want to thank one more time to all those people that I reached out to and really responded to uh, me in my time of need. And I love you all. And I hope you guys have a great day.
Bye.